shackles was all on the Jericho road. On the Jericho road. We you answer his call. We you answer his call. On the Jericho road. On the Jericho road. There's room for just two. There's room for just two. Turn to sing together from our hymn book, hymn number 494, will be our first song to begin with. You're welcome into the house of the Lord on this lovely Sunday morning. May the Lord bless each and every one of you. Amen. It is our usual um, joy in our heart that when we gather together here, we are not here to meet men. We are all here to meet God, who of course knew we were coming and has therefore prepared to meet with us. And it is the prayer of my heart that you will see Jesus today, Amen. just as the quartet made us to understand that on this way to heaven, Jesus is always there. Yeah. Never a care that he cannot deal with. So whatever we have brought to him this morning, let us be encouraged that he will surely answer our prayers. Amen. And of course, the choir gave us the song of praise, magnify, glorify, exalt this great God of heaven whom we have come to meet here. A similar warm welcome is extended to our internet audience. Wherever you may be, we pray that the Lord who is here with us will be with you too. But just in case you just logging on and you're wondering which uh, group is this, this is the Apostolic Faith Church located at number 13, Penn Hill Road, DA53EP, if you live locally or you are visiting locally, you are very welcome to join us. We're just at the beginning of our service, uh, just at the prelude that you have just missed, and you can join us with the congregational singing and the rest of the service. But if you cannot, God is everywhere. Yeah. We bless you wherever you are. Amen. We're taking him 494, Ho oh, my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky, 494. Let's say this is one three and four, verses one, three, and four, and we have Sister Emma as our song leader.
508. Same hymn book, 508. Old reapers in the whitened harvest. Let's sing verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2. God. Oh, rain. Perhaps there are some that are still weak. Yeah. Let's sing this hymn that will encourage you on Christ alone. Yeah. On Christ alone.
Amen. Before prayer is two five two three five two three says storms do not alarm me. Please, if you can stand, let's stand to sing through the three verses. Uh, after that, will be led in prayer. Storms do not.
as we remain standing, Brother Francis will come forward and lead us in congregational prayer. <coughs> Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That we can have peace in the midst of storm. Amen. Lord, we can rest our minds assured of the fact that you will take us through and you will lead us to heaven. Amen. For there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Thank you, Lord God, for that rest. Lord, we pray that you will count us worthy. Amen. Lord, let us not miss it. Amen. Neither have an abide who miss it. God had promised them and their generations yet unborn the priesthood. But they died having no child to succeed them. Our lesson says that they started as saints in the morning but ended up in hell by the end of the day. Lord, we are here. We know that you are a consuming fire. Therefore, Lord God, we don't want to bring strange fire to the house of God. We're just asking that you help us Amen. as leaders and followers. Lord, we ask that we will be open Amen. before you, O oh God, Amen. that we will pour our hearts before you Amen. so that if there be any strange fire, you will purge us of it. Amen. Oh Lord, we ask that this morning you will send your word. Amen. Let it come forth with power. Amen. Let it come forth with unction. Amen. Oh Lord God, let it cause sins in our heart. Amen. Let it divide our hearts and our bones and flesh asunder. Amen. Oh God of heaven and earth, help us this morning. Amen. Bow our knees, oh God. Amen. Bow our hearts before you. Amen. Heal us of our illnesses. Amen. Heal us of, our, of all our infirmities. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Amen. Bless the preacher this morning. Amen. Oh God, we ask that you will save souls. Amen. We pray, oh Lord God, that you will sanctify. Amen. Dear Lord God, baptize the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Heal the sick, oh Lord God. Amen. Bind up the brokenhearted Amen. and let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.
Our scripture reading comes from the book, the book of Psalm 15, reading through from verse 1 to 5. Psalm 15, verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Two, he that walketh upright and worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. Three, he that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Four, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. Five, our last verse. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against innocent, the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,
Start the reading from the Bible reading we just had. It is the book of Psalm, Psalm 15, and I'm taking this four. Psalm 15, verse four. In whose eyes a vile person is contempt, for he honoured them that fear the Lord. He that swore to his own heart and changed not. Yeah. On this Psalm, on my Bible is titled as the happiness of the holy. These are the things that make people who are holy to be happy. Yeah. And at the same time, this is the thing that makes God to be happy. Yeah. Anyone who can fall in line with these psalms, God will be happy with you. Yeah. And I think we want to make our God happy, oh, yeah. and we want to try our best to do what God wants us to do. Right. So the exhortation or the word of encouragement this moment is about um, allegiance to God. Allegiance to God, that is like a promise to God, and then faithfulness to his service. It is two part. You make an agreement, you keep it. So it's not just allegiance only. You have to keep that agreement. So I break the word allegiance down so that those of us uh, who are especially the young one may be able to understand what we mean so that it's not a big grammar. Allegiance is a loyalty or commitment to a superior or to a group or cause. For instance, the people who join the army for them to be able to serve the uh, country, they swear allegiance to the crown or to the queen, yeah. that they're going to do whatever the law asks them to, to do. And also for people who uh, want to change their nationality or become a citizen of a country, they have to swear an allegiance to follow the rules and principles of that very country. Oh, yeah. So we can now see that allegiance is something that comes, it happens in different categories with different people. I'll break it down, down, down. If, for instance, you want to travel from here, let me say from here to Manchester, and you want to go by train. The train is there, it's an offer. They didn't ask you, you are the one who say I want to go by the train. So you buy the ticket, you are entering into allegiance. You are entering into an agreement with them. You are entering into the principle of the traveling from London to Manchester. So after you bought the ticket, on buying the ticket, you see the time the train will depart. So it's up to you. They are not begging you for it. It's an offer. And you have accepted it. So having bought a ticket, you must make yourself available at the train station at least a few minutes before that time of departure. Yeah. If you don't get there on time, you have break your own part of agreement. And then they will fail you. And then the train will just be gone. And you get there, no, 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 it's not. Well, we have an agreement. You have to be at the train station at this time. And if you are not there, you have broken the agreement. So you have it, you have yourself to be punished for that. Yeah. And you can see there's no story for people in this country. We are used to that. 
if you are traveling by a flight um, uh, to another country, when you buy the ticket, they didn't ask you to buy. You are the one that say you want to travel from UK to America or to Norway or to wherever you want to go. It is your own choice. Yeah. But they presented an offer to the whole world yeah. that this is a plane for you to travel to wherever you want. And as you are buying the ticket, you will see the timing there. You have the choice to, okay, should I go in the morning or afternoon or in the evening? You look at your own conveniency. And the moment you buy the ticket, you have entered into agreement. You are swearing allegiance with that aircraft that you will be at the airport at the time they have given you. If you fail, it's automatic punishment. You fail, you miss the flight. And of course, when you get there and you didn't meet up, sorry, what was the time on your ticket? And you tell them, well, sorry, you didn't meet up with the time. So how can we help you? You're giving them business now. So is that you buy another expensive ticket or you turn back and lose the whole money? Yeah. So you can see that an agreement or allegiance or swearing or making a promise is a very common thing. Yeah. Everyone, by one way or another, has entered into agreement in his or her life. Look at the church. It's an open place for the public. It's an over. Yeah. Nobody is forced from the home to come to the church. It is an open demand from God that we should assemble together. Yeah. But at the same time, there's no one that comes to your house and says, get up, go to church today. But you decided on your own to come to the church. You are entering into agreement with God. Yeah. And then you've got to keep your part. Yeah. They tell you the time for the service is 10 o'clock. You are working leisurely after 10. You can't do that with your job. Because once you say you want to go to church, you know the time. It's an agreement. It's an open over. You have to meet up with the time. And then if you come on time, you can imagine you don't see how God will be happy about you. Yeah. House of God also is a place of honor and reference. You don't dress anyhow. No. The house of God is a place where you dress the best to present yourself before the best king and queen on earth. Right. Yeah. You cannot go to the royal family and just dress anyhow, throw your jacket like that. They will throw you away from the entrance because you don't make yourself to be fit to enter into meeting up with the queen or the prime minister. And there are court, magistrate court and different court. If you want to go into any of those places, you don't, you don't just go anyhow. At the, at the entrance, they kick you, excuse me, excuse me. But when you dress qualified to enter into that place, they let you in. So in the house of God, as you are coming in your mind, you are thinking, I'm going to meet the king of all kings, yeah. the lord of all lords. Yeah. I have to make myself presentable. The best, if you have. And to make it easier for those who are poor or rich, the church apostolic that make it so easy, suit, is common. So you don't need to say, I'm very poor, I cannot afford it. And for the ladies, a very simple gown, well-dressed, hair, well-plaited, so that you are presentable before God, not before the pastor. Are you following me? Yeah. This is how we all get into agreement with God. And once you enter into this agreement, you have to keep it. I'll tell you why if you don't keep it. When you tell a child, I'm going out now, if you behave yourself, I'll buy you a biscuit. That child, all his or mine is, mommy or daddy is going to buy me a biscuit. And you have entered an agreement, allegiance with that child, and you don't know. And then for whatever reason, you come back, and the biscuit is not in your hand. You fail that child. Yeah. She can't do a thing, but she look at you like, what type of a mother is this? What type of a father is this? Maybe she forgive, or he forgive you the first time. Second time, third time, oh, my parents are liars anyway. And there's nothing you tell that child that he will take serious anymore. Yeah. You say you buy the child's shoe, well, up to you if you buy. That's your business. Because the, the, the agreement, you have failed the child many, many, many times. May God not make us a liar. Amen. This is an encouragement. You have entered an agreement to, with God. Have you kept it? One advice I was given when I was about to marry, because I was the only one in my family to do the church wedding. And my mother said, hey, this church thing, this boy for better, for worse. Eh? Me, I, don't, I didn't do it all. She called me to a corner. You brought this new woman from nowhere. Are you going to be faithful? Be careful. Why, were, why was my mother so concerned? Because when it comes to church, in my family, it is a place of reference. We can see anything outside. But when you come into the house of God, it's better we mm, hold that mouth than you say it, and then you cannot keep it. My mom said, hey, the thing is like, hey, I'm getting married. Hey, are, you, are you sure? We don't know this woman, but you know how. 
Are you going to be faithful? And I said to my mom, you pray for me, I'll do my best. She said, no, no, listen, listen. You know, when you're about to marry, you're holding your savior like this, are you going to do that all thing when she's even old? Hey! That one is like, what? Why are you thinking this? Why? My mom was doing that because she knew what she was going to in her own marriage. And she gave me, the, he said, I don't have money. This is all I have. You have not done the marriage now because this white, white wedding things, me, I don't know. And then I promised my mom, I knelt down to tell her I meant what I have said. Amen. That for better, for worse. Amen. God helping me, I will stand Amen. by that. Amen. And I thank God God is helping me. Amen. If you have married, you have entered into allegiance, mm. you break it, God will have mercy on you. Amen. These are things that we can't break. The law in the country allows us, but the law of God does not. No. And we have to be careful. Yeah. Now, I'll give an example of a man, I mean, a, a parent and a child. When a child discovers the parent is a liar, it doesn't take your word serious anymore. Imagine if God takes you for a liar. And nothing you said is important. You can pray from dawn to dusk. You are a liar after all. God will not listen. God wants us to check it. Any agreement we have entered into and we have not been able to keep is endangering our life. It's making our service to become worthless. It's making, it's making our prayer to become unanswered. And you wonder, I fasted and I prayed. Why? Has God forgot, forsaken me? The people of God will say, trace back your steps. Probably you have broken an allegiance with God. And God has termed you as a liar. That it's only when you are desperate. Ah, God, you do this for me? I am going to do that. You do this and God do it for you. What did you do? Did you pay back? You don't. So you are presenting yourself before God as a liar. And it's difficult for God to, mm, you are just there where you have mercy on you, but that prayer becomes difficult for God to answer. Because once you make an agreement with God, and it's so easy for you to break it. Just imagine. The place where I work, when I was in Bristol, we ha I have some colleagues that I know them, they are liars. So there's nothing they say that I take seriously. So when it comes to April, they're doing April fool. They don't fool me. Because I know it's all lie anyway. So they will come around, they will make whatever story. I'll just say, so what? They say, why, why you not move? As, have you ever spoken the truth to me at any time? So why should I count on your word? So the April food doesn't work for me because I know all of them. They can rush. Who, who, Michael, your car outside. So what is wrong with the car? Ah, you car, hey, something is on. Hey, OK, leave it now. And then they will try everything. I am not moved. Mike, what's wrong? Because you have never spoken the truth. So your word is not can't, it's not worthy, it's worthless. There's nothing you can say from your mouth that will make me do, ooh, no. May we not be like that with God. Yeah. Allegiance with God. Allegiance to God and faithfulness to his service. Once we enter into disagreement with God, your duty, my duty is to be faithful. Yeah. When I was young, I was looking for where to serve God. At the age of 18, my church, my parent church, I become a choir member. I love that all so much. I always sit with the organist looking at their leg as they play the pedal. Because that song, even when I don't know it, just going to my heart, make me so happy. At the age of eight, I said, God, if you can teach me how to play organ, I will play it for God. I was only eight, and I didn't know where I was going. And somehow, some way, God directed me to know about it. And I found, by no means, I will always play, play for the Lord. Why am I saying this? Some years ago, that was 1987, I had a problem and the church disciplined me. When I say discipline, they asked me to pack everything and get out. It was so, um, it was so painful because I felt I was right. They didn't even ask me anything. They just said, go. So in that bitterness, I went to another church. And I arranged with them at the weekend, the choir song, everything. And when it came to the Sunday for the service, and I began to play. And I discovered that some set of people are just looking at me too much on the, from the congregation. Why are these people looking at me? I'll play, I'll look, their eyes is on me. I'll play, I'll look, okay, whatever. At the end of the service, they came to me. Where are you coming from? I said, what do you mean? You're playing your organ, everything is like apostolic faith. Why are you, you playing like apostolic faith? You don't play like the way we play here. And you know apostolic faith people, they don't leave their church. Oh. How come you are here? I didn't say a word, but they were just giving it to me like that. Are you, are you from apostolic faith? The way you play, the way you do your leg, everything is like apostolic faith. So, well, 
I, I, we love your playing, you know. We enjoy it, oh. but this is how they play in apostolic faith. My dear brother and sister, that's how I left the church. I go, I have to go back, and I say, now, my bitterness is over. Back to my altar, and I start begging God, have mercy on me. So I can't even hide outside. I am identified with this church. May you be identified with God. Yeah. Even though the discipline lasted for a while, for more than a year or two, but I remain on my altar. I say, God, until you bring me back to my post again. And I pleaded and I pleaded. You know what God did for me? Amen. The head of the church, Amen. my own mentor of blessed memory, Reverend Shoyika, he called me. May God bless him. And he prostrated for me to beg me. He said he's sorry. He didn't get to the deep of the story. And he brought me back. See how I will have lost the privilege. See how I'll have thought, uh, yeah, I'm okay. May God help you. Amen. May God help me. Amen. In the age in which we live, men regard promises very lightly. But many people, a promise is kept if it is convenient. Right. Businessmen often make promises. And then after the transaction is clo closed, they go back on their word. Sometimes a man will break his promise if he sees he will lose money on the deal. A true Christian's word is good. Yeah. When he makes a promise, yeah. God demands that he keep it. Yes. That won't stand with me all the time. No matter the problem, I do not want to run away from the church. No matter whatever I'm going through, I do not want to look at the church as they are the one causing me the problem. I want to look at myself as something is wrong. Because I have vowed to serve God. I have spoken, and I don't want to go back. Psalm 15, I want everybody to keep it. This is the expectation of God. A man will speak and will not change his word. Once you have said something, don't change it. Yeah. You know, it's easy for us to talk in our lesson today, Sunday school lesson, Nadab and Abihu. They disobeyed, and God killed them. How many times you have disobeyed? Yeah. You might say, but well, you are not killed. Let me tell you, you are already dead. Because once God takes you as a liar, you are a dead person. Once you pray God doesn't listen to you, you are a dead person walking. So you need to come back to life. Renew your agreement with God, yes. and you'll be alive again. Yes. God. Remember in the Garden of Eden, in the evening time, God always visited Adam and Eve. But the moment they committed sin, they ran away from the Garden of Eden. Yeah. When you see people who are running away from church, it's because they have entered into the wrong thing. When you have not entered the wrong thing, when you have not offended God, you like to be in the church. Yeah. The elder says the birds of the same feather flocks together. You want to be with the people of God, unless when it is not possible. You want to pray with the people of God. You want to sing with the people of God. You want to listen to the word of God. You want to walk along with the people of God. You want to reason with the people of God. You want to have friends among the people of God, because you are of God. God is holy. You want to be holy. You want to be with the holy people of God. May God help you. Amen. Not to change from the word you have spoken. Amen. I've given you a good example of parents and a child. Please look. This is an encouragement. This message is an encouragement. Mm -hmm. It's an encouragement for you to check, ah, have I failed God? Yeah. Have I spoken and I have turned back from my word? Yeah. Because if you do, God will not be happy. If you look at the book of Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13. Hebrews 6, 13 said, Hebrews 6, verse 13. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Yeah. Imagine God is making promises. Imagine God is making an agreement with man. Everybody likes to read Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to uh, 14. It's a blessing, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, and you shall be blessed at home, and you shall be blessed outside, and you shall be blessed. Whatever you lay your hand upon, you shall prosper. You will ask, and you will receive. These are promises of God. But if you look at the tiny letter, that is a condition. If, yeah. if you are faithful, if you keep to that what God wants you to do, if you are honest, it is easy to say, yes, bless, 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 bless. How about your part? You've got to play your part. I remember that was 1978 when I went for water baptism and service, and I wore a particular dress, water baptism, that took, immersed me into the water for baptism. Just, I'm a man, and I've always been a man. The shirt I was wearing, the minister of God was able to see through the shirt my singlet. 
and he said that was wrong. That if you are a child of God, before you leave your house, you will look at the mirror. Do I look like a child of God? He said, when you do this now, all that person does that, and the woman does that, you'll be seeing all their undies, and it's wrong. But when you become a child of God, you should live a life of example. He said, I'm not saying you have lost your salvation, but the Spirit of God has not spoken to you yet. That's your dressing, you should be mindful of it. I went back with tears. He didn't say I was I had committed a sin, but at the moment you are saved, the Spirit of God should be speaking with you. If the Spirit is not speaking with you, really check your situation. Yeah. Trace yourself back. Something is not right. Yeah. That's true. In the Garden of Eden, in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 28, I think, God was coming to the people there in the evening, chapter, two, five, five, chapter 3, verse 8. In the cool day, Genesis 3, 8, God will come to the Adam and Eve. You might say, oh, God doesn't come like that today. He does on Sunday. God comes to meet his people on Sunday, on the day of the Lord. He said, we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together because God will come. And when he comes and you are not there, you are forsaking the assembly of the people of God, you are forsaking God himself. And then when you have problem and you call upon God, how can? When God called a meeting, you did not attend. God will help you. Allegiance to God is a very serious one. Man can make promise to you and fail. But God keeps to his word too seriously. Yeah. And every time I thank God for my mother, she cautioned me. So whenever I feel somehow, because I'm in my marriage, I go to my corner and say, God, help me. I have vowed. I have promised. I have to do it. When I come to people doing wedding, you think I just come for their wedding? I come to listen to that promise to the vow they are making. Because when I listened to my own in that day, before the pastor said it, I've already said, yes, 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 yes. I was so anxious. Oh, yeah. But when I come to other people's wedding, and I say, hey, so this is what I've said yes to. God have mercy. This is not a joke. It's not a joke. With God, it's not a joke. And you know the thing that God did for me that is helping through my mom of blessed memory? She said, whenever something is wrong, Michael, take it to yourself that you are the one that is wrong. Don't think it is your wife. So when anything goes wrong, I just say, okay, what have I done wrong now? Okay. okay. Without any reason, I just say, okay, I'm sorry. And everything just went fine. Yeah. And all is just well. Yeah. Somebody asked me sometimes ago, you are always with your wife. I said, because I've entered into a vow with God. Yeah. Not just with my wife, with God. Yeah. And I have to keep that because God is looking at me every day. I have to do that. Like, see, we are just married today. Every day. Check yourself, brother and sister. Are you doing so? You need to check it. It's a vow. Yeah. It's an allegiance to God. Yeah. And God doesn't take promises lightly. Yeah. God is not a joker. The Bible said, God is not a lie. God is not a man that he will lie. Yeah. Neither is he the son of man that he will deceive. As he's spoken and he's not done it, whatever comes out from the mouth of God shall come to pass. Yeah. That is God. That is whom we are dealing with. Yeah. For you to live an easy life, you need to think about that. Mm-hmm. Where if I go and there's no church there or it's too far, I'd rather get that day, start reading the word of God. When they sent us to, I'm sorry, that's the only testimony I have, so I have to mention it every time. When they sent us to Gambia 1995 as missionary, the church they asked us to join, they couldn't accept the doctrine of apostolic faith. Yeah. So they kicked us away. And then when we reported back, they said we should go back to our house. And what, we only have a room and a parlor, as they say there. And inside our sitting room there, that's where my wife and I will I'll be playing the organ. My wife will be playing violin. And after which we read this on the school, people start coming inside. Amen. That's how God established the church. Amen. That's how we bought the land there. That's how we built church there. Amen. And I can say it's God who did it. Amen. Distance is not an excuse because you have entered into allegiance with God. You cannot say, ah, where I'm worshiping is too, uh, my house is too far to the church. Hey, may God not say your house is too far to bless you. If you know your house is too far, think about it. Think about it. You must come to church in the morning and in the evening. It's not the church telling you. It's you telling yourself. It is the agreement you have entered into God. When you take a breakfast, you need a dinner. Maybe you manage lunch. When you take a breakfast and in the dinner you don't eat anything, you lie down there, you are looking at the ceiling, it's four square, it's three square. 
and you don't sleep. So also with God, you come to church in the morning, what excuse are you giving me in the evening? Some people say, because of my child. Ah, are you blaming God for giving you children? God have mercy. Amen. Amen. God bless you with children. That's not an excuse. Because we are going to church very early tomorrow morning. Uh, we are going to work very early tomorrow morning, Monday. Don't you know that before? It is an allegiance to God, Amen. not to man. And you need to be looking at it that way. Don't look at our pastors or any of the ministers. Look at it that this church was open to the public. You enter it. You enter into agreement with God. You must be decent. And the agreement with God is that the, uh, during the service, you listen, sing with the people of God. That's the agreement. You can't sit down in the household of God and you don't sing. You are breaking the agreement with yourself and God. And at the end of the service, your agreement is to come forward and pray. The minister only reminding you. And you just, the service just finished and you just walk away. Who do you think you are doing that to? To God? May God not walk away from you. Amen. May God not walk away from you. Amen. When you call upon him, he will hear you. Yes. And while you are speaking, he will answer. Amen. In the presence of God, when you know you are tired, you don't dare sleep on your knees. I say this many times. When I am tired, I stand up. You can't sleep in the courts. You cannot be visiting the prime minister and sleep and say, you are tired. They'll kick you out and lock you up. The house of God is a house of holiness. Yes. It's a place where we reference everything. Yeah. It's a place where you humble yourself. Yeah. It's a place where you mind what you say. It is good to give testimony. Many people will say, like that, short or long, I will serve that Lord. And it's not yet long. You are not serving him. And every testimony you are saying that. In that rain or fire, I will serve that Lord. And it's because of my child. May God keep that child for you. Amen. May Jesus keep that child for you. Amen. Don't ever give excuse, children of God. It is not acceptable by God. And God put it as a burden on my own mind to let you know when you decide to serve God, you have entered an allegiance, you are swearing an allegiance to God, to serve him in due season, out of season, in the raining time, in the snowy time, in the sunny time, to be faithful. Have you been praying for salvation and you don't get it? Have you retraced your step? Maybe that's why you don't get it. Because you have confessed your sin, that's correct. You have consecrated yourself, that's correct. But what time did you come to church today? And whenever you come to church, do you really pray or you are looking for your friends? Do you take the, every other meeting seriously? Do you attend the evening service? Oh, yeah, it's too far. Is that your excuse? And many people who are saying this, you know, the thing that pains me most is that they have a car. I remember when I accepted the gospel, I didn't have a car. I have to travel a very, very, very long distance to get to the church. Because I know I've entered into agreement with God. Amen. Some people will say, I'm doing my studies. I couldn't pass. I don't know what is wrong with me. Because you don't come to the house of God. You don't meet God when he asks for you to come. And you want him to bless you. Or because when you come, all you are looking at uh, everybody, well, you are not taking anything serious. You are looking at, okay, they, they're just doing their own. They are not just doing their own. Oh. They are doing what God asked them to do. Yeah. So God wants you and me to check ourselves. Imagine the story of Jephthah in the book of Judges chapter 11. Jephthah had a problem, and then he had to pray to God. If you can give me victory, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. Nobody asked him to say that. He said it on his own volition because of the level of desperacy to get the victory that he needed. And God gave, him, gave it to him cheap. Now he came back, he has to keep to his word. When you read the Bible, you will know that Jephthah made a very serious sacrifice. The only child. The only child. Because she has, he has spoken. He has to keep to his word. God, too, has spoken many times, and he does keep to his word. So, brethren, it's an encouragement. This message is not to scare you. It is to encourage you. Once you enter into allegiance with God, be faithful. Keep it. Once you keep it, you will see that gospel is easy. Oh, yes. Salvation is easy. Yeah. You confess your sin, you get salvation. Yeah. You consecrate your life, you pray for sanctification, it sanctifies you. Right. You devote your life more for God, and you pray, it fills you with Holy Spirit and fire. Yeah. Can you imagine how easy that is? Check yourself. I need to check myself. 
Have you been able to keep to your word? Or do you think, okay, they, they want us to do this? I want you to look at the promise of God in Deuteronomy 28. I would like you to read it. All that promises is there for you. Yeah. But look at the condition. Look at the if. And then trace yourself back. Recognize that it is an over. And once you have accepted it, you've got to be faithful. In the service of God, you've got to be faithful. Wherever there is a call for the service of God, you should not be wanting. There are a lot of benefits when you are faithful to God. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. He said, but as it is written, he ears has not had, neither have entered into the heart of man, the thing which God has prepared for them, who, who love him, who, who obey him, those who keep to his word. In Proverbs 28, verse 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Once you are faithful, you will abound. The blessing of God will be there for you. In Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. God will promise you. He's faithful. So we need to be faithful. And all will be easy. In Deuteronomy 29, verse 9, so keep the word of this covenant to do them that you may prosper. Amen. That you may prosper Amen. in all that you do. Yes. That is the promise of God. Yes. That is the covenant of God. Yes. That is the allegiance of God. Yes. And you are entering into it. Yes. And then read Deuteronomy 28. There's a lot of blessing there. From verse 1 to 14. You will see that God really loves you. Yes. He wants all the blessing for you. And if you can be faithful, and you begin by praying today. Don't make today be the day God will record a different thing about you. Be faithful. Yeah. As we will be singing, and the people of God will, will, will be singing, and then we will pray, make sure either on the altar here or on your knee on there, you pray seriously. Yeah. Renew your agreement. Yeah. Renew your covenant with yeah. God. Yeah. Be steadfast. The blessing will accrue. Yeah. You shall be happy. Yeah. God will bless you as we sing yeah. hymn 168. Heavenly Father, what a privilege you are giving us once more yeah. to come before you, yeah. to search our heart, yeah. 
to renew our promises, our allegiance, and to be faithful. Let your spirit come down and help us as we pray, as we seek your help, as we look up to you. Come down, Lord Jesus. All these wonderful blessings that are for us, we are here to claim them. Pour them down, O Lord, unto the little ones and the young ones and the adults and the seniors, all our visitors and um, all our members, everyone. We all want to leave this place today with bounties from heaven, with joy from heaven. Do this for us and much more as we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.